to another episode of Super Duper South. On today's episode... We're building a pit lift. Now I'm going to take you step by step and show you a fellow broke racer that can't make it to the track every Saturday because you got a couple hungry youngins at the house, you got bills to pay, you can't afford a lift. Hey, let's build one. I'm going to show you step by step from the metal work to the hydraulics, everything you need to know to get yourself up in the air at the racetrack or at your home garage. So stay tuned, stick around for every step. Make sure you like and subscribe to this. Subscribe to this channel. Hey, my Lord, saving you thousands here. Just hit the little button right there. That's all you got to do. And then proceed forward. I sure do appreciate it. And keep on keeping on. Let's do this thing. So first things first here, we're going to have to build four pieces, that's pretty much our main structure. You're going to have two on the bottom and then two on top, parallel to one another. And to do that, I got myself a little jig. You're going to want to make some sort of jig. Don't laugh at this one, guys. I mean, this thing's made me quite a few pit lifts, so looks can be deceiving. Some sort of jig, because you need all four of these boogers. They need to be precise, okay, because you're relying on one cylinder or two, it doesn't really matter one or two cylinders. You need this thing to go up evenly on both sides, perfectly square. Okay, to do that, I've got some one inch DOM. It's gotta be seamless, even though I know DOM isn't technically seamless, but there's not a seam in it that you can fill because you're gonna have your three quarter coal roll in the center. You do not want that ripping it. Uh, one inch outside, it's like three quarter inner. I think it's like 11 gauge or something, just some one inch DOM. That's seven and a half inches long. Yeah, I'm giving you that measurement. That's what I made mine. My center to center on all four pieces is 41 and a quarter. So what I did, I cut my 14 gauge, probably could get by with 16 gauge, one inch square tubing. I made those 40 and three quarter inches long. I think I notched them about a quarter inch. Now you need to use a, if you're using a tube and notcher, you need to use one inch notch. If not, you get yourself a grinder, just keep grinding until you make sure. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Once it's welded, if it's perfectly fitting that jig, who gives a crap how you did it? You did it, and that's all that matters, right? So do whatever you gotta do. I use tube and notcher with a one inch because obviously one inch fits right in there, nice and snug. Okay, now, I've got here a quarter inch fine thread, grade eight nut. Doesn't really matter, it's grade eight, that's what I got. Reason I do that, you don't probably have to do this, but you know, you're building yourself a lift here, man. I mean, you, your dad's gonna see this, all your friends, all the other racers, whatever. You wanna look legit. You want them to say, hey, this guy went the distance. So go and make, put yourself a couple grease fittings. You could drill and tap this. This is easy for me because I got these little grease fittings, got a little 45 on them and they are quarter inch fine. So all I do is weld them on there and then boom, bada beam, bada boom, you got yourself a nice grease fitting. All right, so now we're gonna use our jig and we're gonna put these pieces together to make all four of them. Now, in your jig, my personal opinion, I face one grease fitting up, even though it'll be down on the lift, but on my jig, I face it up. And then the other grease fitting, I face straight in. And that just more or less makes it where the grease fittings do not get hit by the car. Keeps them out the way, but makes it where you can still grease them. Get everything in place. Throw yourself some tacks, always tack. Don't start welding, going crazy. Take your time, tack everything, then weld. Now that we got all four rails completed, out the jig, cooled down, did a little sand and on that, clean them up some, you know, make it a little easier for our next welds. We're gonna go and start off by building the base of the lift. And it's pretty important, you finish just like you start. We're gonna start off here nice and square, keep it all perfect, take our time, put some clamps around this bugger, 
and we're going to do that all the way throughout so whenever you're done this thing is going to lift up with ease and have no problems so uh, we'll just start off everything clamped down what are you waiting on get on over here take a look at this well, I actually got to bring you over here to me so with that being said 32 and a half centers is what this lift is being built so you can copy these measurements if it's going to work for your application the main structural piece is going to tie the two beams in together so one by two it's like 11 gauge, about an eighth inch thick. And you want that fairly thick because your cylinder's gonna be pushing on that, picking up a 2,500 pound race car. You can't have this thing bending, people looking at you crazy and they walk by this thing, are you kidding me? So anyways, pretty important piece. Make sure you don't slack on that. Now, I also add some gussets. Fairly little simple little gussets there. And you want, in between those, no narrower than nine and a half just for the simple reason, after you get your cylinder in there, you won't have enough room to push your pin in without being in a bind and just you'll be cussing, raising ruckus and blaming me for your problems. And so we're getting you ahead of that. And also, which that puts it about six and a half inches from here to here, give or take. And you want it around 20 and a half inches from the top of this one to the top of that for the simple reason when the lift is back, your little arms are not getting into this. That way it can go all the way down. I mean, your top ball, your top of your lift should sit flush on the bottom of your lift if you do all this correctly. So, cut that up, get that ready, clean your metal. Now I got some three quarter coal roll. This is all gonna be cut off at some point, but you wanna start off with one solid piece because it's just making sure these holes are perfectly straight with one another and prevent binding whenever the lift gets all put together. Just start off with one stationary piece and the end will whack these off. I cut this piece 42 and a half inches long and that gives me about a little over an inch, but almost like an inch and an eighth on each side, which gives me room for my arms which we'll explain that later. Be welded on that. All right, so now to get your base built here, go ahead and cut you six pieces of three quarter coal roll, nine and a half inches long. Go and bevel your ends up and you know, take an old tiger part of that booger and clean her up some. And what you're gonna, gonna do is on your base, go ahead and stick you a piece of the both fronts. You only need six because don't forget you got your long one going all the way across the back. So like I said, we will cut that and then take your other two rails and go and pop them in there. Should have about a inch, little over an inch on each side. All right, now that being said, then you need to get some one by one square tubing, 16 or 14 gauge, probably 14's best. I cut mine at 17 and a half inches end to end, but I notched, I took a three quarter notcher, tubing notcher, and I notched it a quarter inch on each end. So it's 17 inches from inside to inside of each notch, quarter inch notch, 17 and a half, outside to outside. I should have told you this earlier, but make sure on the bottom, your base, your grease fitting is facing up on the back side and facing in on the front. Then your other two rails, you're gonna have the grease fitting facing down on the front and in on the back. And just set your rail up there and you take your pieces that you got notched here and just ever like so, go start on one end and fit it in there, push it up tight and you should be able to go to the opposite end and slip them right in there. You ain't gotta break out a tape measure or nothing, just make sure your top rail's about square on top of your bottom rail and make sure all your little lift arms are pretty well square. Now when you go to weld this, obviously tack it all first. You can do one rail at a time. You don't have to do them both at the same time. You can do one at a time. But when you weld it, get it all tacked up. You're not gonna weld the inside here, because that's gonna be rubbing against your DOM. All you're gonna weld, top, bottom, and then you'll hit the side. Well, this thing is actually starting to look like an old genuine lift here. 
And if you've done everything right thus far, you should be able to pick up on each one of these boogers and pick it up. Let it down, fairly simple. When it's all the way down, you'll know if you're right or not. If it's all the way down flush on top of your ba base, chances are you're doing pretty daggum good. So with that, both sides are done now, we're gonna give us a little structural support back here. You gotta make this thing loud and proud, super strong, right? Just cut your cross brace roughly an inch or two from the bottom of your arms. Run that bugger across. Maybe that'll stay. Cut yourself two gussets somewhat close to the center of your crossbar and you know somewhat close to the top of your risers there and weld that in place and that's going to give us our strength and need on the back then we'll proceed forward with that all right so now that you got backside lift pretty well taken care of for the most part we're going to work on our cylinder placement we're also going to work on the front side this front side is a little more critical it's got to be a lot stronger you see here this is more or less just tie-in piece we're just tying the two sides together making it come in even whatever right here this is where the back side of your cylinder is going to mount bada beam now we're going to do our cross brace that's going to go where the front side of the cylinder, cylinder mounts. So you're going to be having a lot of pressure on this piece right here. Go ahead and cut you out a piece of 1x2, 11 gauge. You kind of see where my placement is, somewhere in that area. Cut it real fit right up in there. Now after you cut that, get you some 1 inch thick. It could be 1 and a quarter or 1 inch. Just something to weld to one side of that 1x2. And all you're doing is you're just making this bugger. I mean this thing right here is going to be three times at least stronger, I bet. So whenever it's pushing on this, you're not going to have this effect of wanting to bend this one by two. It's going to keep its strength. You're giving this thing a rib, making it a lot stronger. Though you, you know, three little stringers on there, and they got to be one solid weld. You're just trying to keep the piece on there. Make sure they look that good right there. I tell you, if I had a dollar for every time I laid a weld like that down, I'd probably have around seven dollars, maybe seven fifty. But anyhow, get that piece, get your piece of metal welded on. Go and pick yourself up a cylinder. Just give you the specs of this one. The one I'm using is inch and a half bore, meaning this right here is an inch and a half wide, outside to outside. It's got a one inch shaft, boom, and it's got 16 inches of stroke to it. I got that off rugged made, bought a lot off there, they seem to be the best priced. But you can get them on Amazon just as easy, maybe a little more expensive. So go and get you one of those. Then you're going to have to make yourself some little tabs here. You can kind of get an idea how I made this. A three quarter hole, because it's going to be three quarter coal rolls going to work as your pin. And just, I mean, you, could, you don't even have to have that little piece on there. You could be something just like that. I just do that because I weld on the top side of this one. It's going to give a lot of strength. I use the same ones on this side and it's just going to make it that much more weld. But you can make something happen. This is three eighths thick. Probably get by with just some quarter inch. And then get you some pins made, roughly three inches long, and you should be ready for the next step. But you better not skip out on that right there, because otherwise this sucker will bend. You need to put that rib in there and pay attention when you weld it on the lift. Don't forget that rib has to be facing down, because your mount's going to be on the top side. Now it's so starting off with Mark center at the bottom of the mount, where the bottom of the cylinder is going to mount. I want to mark center on this piece as well. We're just going to place our pin and our mounts to the cylinder. Do not weld these pins or anything yet because your cylinder is coming back off as in we've got to do a little work to the cylinder before you can really use it. And you'll have to do the same exact thing. We'll put you a couple mounts on there. Place your back side pretty well center. Here. Go and put your mount on the other end through the hole. Then we will take the cylinder back out. 
So now that you got that tacked in place, you're going to add some little gussets on this. And unlike the back, you're actually, since it's a little more structural here, you're going to go ahead and add one up top too. So you got the angle down on that wrong. Just make sure you give yourself enough room when you're doing one on top that you can still get your pin in and out. So got to just kind of as close to the top as possible or the center as possible. On the bottom side, kind of see it's kind of fairly close to the bottom, fairly close to the center. Tack them in and then weld the whole unit out. So now we're gonna put our old fold over handle on there. Let me see if I can get you a better shot of that thing. I used three quarter square tubing. I believe it's like 16 gauge. And then I got, and you don't have to use this particular chain, but I got some 81X chain. And I just got a link and I welded the pin so they wouldn't come out. I welded my T, my handle to it on one side. Then I notched a piece of one inch to go on the other side. More or less going to weld that bugger right to the side. The bottom rail of my lift. And it'll make it where in a closed position it's folded over. And whenever I want to open it, it just flips right over. Handle's all done. We're going to add some dollies to this thing. Removable dollies. That way we can roll it in and out the trailer a lot easier. And what I got here, you're going to start off with some 3 quarter by 1 8 flat stock. And you can see I just got like a little 5 inch piece and a little 2 inch rib with a bolt. And after they're all painted up, our caster will be bolted on like so. And we're going to weld these little pieces that I made out of some 1 by 1 tube and I just cut a little depth, made it about a 3 eighths of an inch wide. And we'll weld that bugger right there. That way when it's welded on, slip this thing in there like so, and then wheel the dolly out. So the very last thing we're gonna to do to this lift, other than painting, is we're gonna add a safety feature. And that safety feature is a stop, more or less a little kicker to make it when you lift a lift all the way up, you can put this bugger down and that'll keep it from falling on top of you just in case something crazy was to happen. To do that, go and put, lay your lift on its side. I'm putting my safety lock on the right side, passenger side of the vehicle, but it doesn't matter, so do whatever you want. I'm using 5 8 OD, I'm sorry, 5 8 ID, 3 quarter OD. And what I do is I start off by drilling a 3 quarter hole in my frame, kind of further up towards the front of the frame. And you take that piece, hammer that bugger in there. The reason you want to do this is it's going to give you all your strength back to your lift that you lost after you drilled that hole. And on your arm, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna notch one in where you can put one of the same pieces of three quarter OD, 5 8 ID, weld that piece in, and then you'll run a bolt through there. And the reason you want your lift all the way extended out, that way it'll tell you where you need to put your little foot and how long you need to make your piece. See, I mean, you can use some one by one angle, but more or less you bolt that piece in, and then you'll weld this angle wherever it needs to go. That way after the lift is in place, that piece of angle will hold this tubing and keep the lift from folding and closing on you. So we just got our lift back from powder coat, and I must say, very, very fancy. I mean, it completely changed the look of the whole lift. Don't get no nicer than that for an old steel pit lift, especially built right here at the old house company that did this for me is uh, Custom Metalworks LLC, McClenny, Florida, kind of closer to Jacksonville, Florida, so I guess North Florida. So if you're in this area and ever need some powder work done, highly recommend. Quick, fast, and he's a uh, local thrasher, a racer, so you always try to support your racers. Before we go any further, there's one more little bit of fabricating we gotta do. This cylinder here, we're gonna have to cut we're gonna have to cut this bottom off here and we're gonna have to turn it. The reason being, these late models, now if you got a higher vehicle, this isn't necessarily necessary, but these late models are so low to the ground with these sticking up with your little uh, fitting, there's a good chance that at some point your frame's gonna catch that fitting. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it where we can turn this thing sideways. Take in mind before you do this, this is not so much critical in cutting, but just do it either way. Go ahead and extend your cylinder. That way if there is any sort of heat, it keeps it off that 
whatever thing in my bob but whatever is inside here i just know you want it as far from the heat as possible especially when you get to weld this back on i'm gonna use a porta band just try to cut it nice and flush at the bottom you do not want to cut into this just even if you have to cut outside the weld and grind it down but get that cut i'm using a porta band you can use a whatever cut off well anything that'll do some cutting All right once you get your ram cylinder welded back in place. Do not fold it down until that sucker is completely cold. You want it completely cold and then you can proceed to press the lift all the way down so you can proceed on. Now, what you're gonna do, you need to go and make your decision. Are you gonna have a single acting pump or a dual acting pump? Single acting means is it's gonna power up, but the weight will be what pushes it down. That's gonna be a good thing because it's less money, because it's less hose and you know, maybe less hassle, but my personal preference, I like a dual action because it's going to allow it to adjust. You can adjust your speed of how fast you want the sucker to come down and go up. It's going to be a lot safer, come down a lot so slower than having all that 2,500 pounds or whatever it is, just pushing it right on down. So I'm doing a double acting pump here. And with that being said, I got to have both hoses in. If you were doing single acting, you would just run a hose to the bottom and you would just put a plug up top. That's all you'd have to do. But keep in mind, like I said, that weight's going to force it down pretty quick. So go ahead and go to the store, uh, probably O'Reilly's Napa, and get you some Dash 6 by Dash 6 Boss to JIC. So you need to get two elbows, Dash 6 on both sides, one side Boss, one side JIC, Mel on both sides. And you'll just screw the Boss in as far as you can, and once you get it in, you tighten this little jam nut, like so. Okay. And then on your hoses, it's going to be a 3 8 hose, which is also known as Dash 6. And you're going to want to go, I've got a machine to make my own hoses, so it saves me a little bit of money. But if you don't, which most of you are not going to have one, go to O'Reilly's or Napa, that's on, or any kind of hydraulic machine shop, and just tell them you want two hoses. 3 8 big, and I got a female JIC going into my elbow. I'm sorry, a male. Yeah, female JIC going into my elbow, and on the other end, I got a male pipe, which I got my Simmons flat face quick finesse, quick connect fittings on the end of. Just makes it a lot easier to rather than having to tighten them. You know, you go your own route there. I went with that. One's going to be male. One's going to be female. Doesn't necessarily matter which one you make which. Just make sure it matches on your pump. So, get that all done. Proceed to your pump. I like to use these Dewalt boxes. Uh, just look up online, Dewalt toolbox with wheels, has little wheels in the bottom, handle built into the top, and it honestly fits perfect. Got enough room for the battery in the back, which I don't have in yet, and my pump forward. Now, these pumps, the fittings that's gonna run your hydraulics, they typically come with like this German, just weird little fitting, I don't even know what size that is, to be honest with you. But they give you a pack. Make sure it shows that pack. It'll be like two more fittings, but instead of this, and it'll have a Dash 6 JIC. So you wanna replace both those. There's one up top on that side and one a little bit lower on that side. Replace those. Now keep in mind the fitting, both of them fittings, I don't know if you can see both fittings. There's one on that side and one on that side. The one that's higher up, that's gonna be your power up. So, keep that in mind. So if you got like down here, your power up's gonna go to the bottom hose. So if you got on my bottom hose, I've got a female quick connect on the end of this hose, I need to have a male quick connect, that way it just slaps right in there. And then it'll be the opposite on your other side. Double acting pump is gonna be power up, power down, and it's the same amount of pressure on both sides. Get out in a second. But once you change your fitting, then you're gonna choose your length. I made mine, 16 foot that's a pretty long hose that gives you plenty of length you can get by with 10 to 12 but i want to make these 16. so you're going to go to a store get your hose made and tell them on one end you want a short radius female dash six jic and that's going to screw into your pump so short radius it's got to be pretty tight jic dash six on the other end it's going to be dash six straight male pipe again and that's what you'll screw your quick connect on same thing with the other side now, I'm trying to get through this fast without wasting a lot of time here, but pumps typically come pretty well 
pressurize pretty close where they need to be at. But if you do have to adjust this, underneath your hoses, there's two little fittings. You see this bugger right here I'm touching? Yeah, what it is, has a jam nut and that's an Allen head on the outside. Loosen that jam nut and you can adjust that Allen bolt which adjusts your pressure. Now keep in mind if you're using a double acting, whatever you do on this side, you've got to do the same exact thing on this opposite side, your power down side. Because they've got to be the exact same power up, power down, same amount. So whatever you do to the one side, do it to that side. If you get confused and you mess up, just break them loose, screw them both all the way back in and back off the same amount of turns till you get it where you want to be at. You know, just tinker with it and you'll get it where it lifts up at a good speed and goes down at a good speed as well. So moment of truth, people. Let's find out all this hard work, time, and money is going to pay off. Let me just show you all the features real quick. How about some casters right there? Hmm. Who's clowning now? Coming out the trailer, boys and girls. Nice fold over handle. Make sure you always fold this handle over before using your lift. Otherwise, you're going to tear something up. Move your casters like so. Let's go ahead and let, make sure our old lightage is working. <laughs> Indeed it is. It's going to give you a little light show underneath there. Let people see all the non-painted items and crap work you've done over the past 10 years you've had this car. Pal. Hey, it's time to clean this thing up a little bit. Now, if everything is wired up correctly, this thing should go right on up. Let's see, going up. There we go, a little backlash. Don't get much better than that, ladies and gentlemen. She is a beaut. Let's see if going down goes as smooth as going up there. 